So some of you might have seen Nathaniel Drew's most recent video he published on YouTube which is called What I Hate About Living in Paris. I will link it below in the description in case you haven't seen it yet. But it made me laugh because it reminded me of this scene from Sex and the City where Carrie is dating New York and she says, if Louis was right and you only do get one great love, New York might just be mine and I can't have nobody talking shit about my boyfriend. And I kind of feel that way about Paris. I've lived here for 10 years, I've seen all the pros and cons that this city can offer and despite all the drawbacks, Paris had my heart from the beginning. So I just want to address the points that he made in his video and add my perspective, whether that be in agreement, in disagreement, offering a solution, just elaborating and offering more context and mostly just adding my perspective as a woman who's been living in Paris for 10 years. Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. I'm Cecily an Australian writer and creator based in Paris. Up until now my content has mostly focused on wellness and self-development but today we are talking all things Paris which is something that I want to include more in my upcoming videos. So let's go through the nine points that Nathaniel listed in his video and I'll share my thoughts. And I do agree with some of his points or at least understand where he's coming from. He briefly mentioned bureaucracy at the beginning of his video and I totally get it. He also mentioned AC or lack thereof. I understand that as well. Personally, I had to buy a mini AC for my place because in the summer my apartment is like an oven. It gets direct sunlight and because I work from home Home, I just need it to cool it down a little bit and I have to say this week we're going to have a heat wave so it's going to be between 30 and 40 degrees the whole week. It's an investment I made a few years ago and I definitely get like a couple of weeks use out of it every year so for me it is worth it. He also touched on constant construction work in the city and I have to say having lived in London as well it's just something you have to deal with in any big city. I think New York would be the same and it's a sign of growth of the city, economic growth, and it's a sign that they're taking care of the city and that they're maintaining it. I mean, Paris is known as one of the most beautiful cities in the world and it's not for nothing. You have to maintain it. Other cities in France look like they're falling apart and so they're probably much quieter, but it's a choice in the end. Personally, I don't mind putting up with the noise. I know that it's for a reason. And so most buildings in Paris get their facade renovated every 10 years to maintain the appearance it requires maintenance that's just how it is so his first main point was deliveries this has actually improved immensely over the past 10 years there's now a system called a point relay which is like an option you can select when you're ordering something online and they will deliver it to a specified location it might be like a little shop or a dry cleaner or a supermarket there are a lot of little small stores that will accept your packages and then when you're available within the next like I think they hold them for about two weeks you can go and pick it up and bring it home so that's a solution if you can't be present when a package is being delivered or if there are issues with your specific building for example if you don't have a guardian I personally have a guardian and most of the time I will get it delivered to my door and if for some reason the delivery person doesn't want to come all the way to my door or if I'm not home then they will normally leave it with the guardian and yes she only works part-time I think there's like four hours in the day where she's not there but it still serves as a second option and when I worked in an office full-time I would just get all my packages delivered to the reception so that was definitely the best option when I was working a nine-to-five what I kind of noticed with the beginning of Nathaniel's video is that it seemed like he wanted to Americanize Paris he wanted the conveniences and practicalities and efficiency of America in France but you have to remember we're in Europe this isn't the same mentality people don't have the same attachment to efficiency it's more about enjoying your day-to-day -day life he mentioned needing numbers on our apartment doors to make life easier and I have to say sure it would probably make life easier but is it really necessary because we can describe where our apartment door is located and the beauty of the French language is that they manage to use double the words to describe the same thing that you would say in just a few words in English it's just the way it is Paris is not somewhere that you would want to live if you're looking for convenience ease or efficiency it's somewhere that you would live if you want to enjoy beauty beautiful 
beautiful architecture, beautiful language, amazing food, cultural experiences. It is a fast paced city in a sense. It's just not an efficient city. So there's no point trying to hope that it will be. So his second point is that the French are allergic to work. Look, I think it's a little harsh to say that, to say the least. So in France, there are two types of contracts. You can have a cadre or non-cadre. So that defines how many hours you work in a week. So a non-cadre will work 35 hours and a cadre will normally have a contract for 39 hours per week. Leading up to the end of any big project, you'll find that people are working extra hours. They're trying to get it done on time. Just like you would find in any country, I think, when it comes to the end of the project, the pressure is on, people are working overtime, people might be working on the weekend, but what will happen normally is that any overtime will be caught up with paid time off. So we'll touch on that in the next point. But personally, I'm of the belief that your health is the most important asset that you have and that you should be prioritizing sleep, you should be trying to reduce your stress, find time to exercise and eat healthily, rather than trying to compete over who's working the most or the hardest, just to wind up with a heart condition at 50. I just don't see the point. I just don't think it's worthwhile. In terms of shops being open, they are actually much more open now than they were when I first moved here. When I first moved here, nothing was open on a Sunday. Now you can find big uh, shopping centers are open on Sundays, even shopping strips, high street shopping. There are a handful of supermarkets as well. There should be a supermarket in your area that will be open on a Sunday, even if not all supermarkets are open on Sundays. A Sunday is a day to spend with family, with friends, getting some time outside, doing some exercise. Sunday is still a sort of special day in France. And also many of the shops that are open on Sundays, like bakeries, they will be closed on the Monday as kind of to make up for the day that they were uh, open. Okay, his third point was vacations all the time. There is some truth to this. In August, Paris is a ghost town and you really shouldn't be expecting to get a lot done if you rely on collaborations. Most people get five weeks off per year and then if you are a cadre, normally you will accumulate RTTs which add up to an additional two weeks holidays and then if you had done overtime and your company has a system in place, which it should legally, if you're working overtime to finish up a project like I mentioned earlier, you might accumulate extra days off to add on to all of your other days. Personally, I worked at as an office administrator when I first moved to Paris. And so I was actually managing the annual leave of people in the office. We didn't have a software for this at the time. So I was manually going through and, and entering requests of people for time off. And I found that most people were not taking all of their time off every year. Some people had huge amounts of annual leave accumulated that they hadn't taken yet. This often happens because many companies in France actually don't allow you to take annual leave in the first year that you're working there. So it will depend from company to company. Some companies will say you can start taking it straight away. You earn two and a half days per month and other companies will want you to wait a full year depending on the company. Some companies will let you roll over your annual leave that's unused to the next year while other companies will say you have to use up all your annual leave by the end of May otherwise you lose it. So you'll have a lot of people taking all of their annual leave in one lump holiday, either in August or maybe during the school breaks over Easter or maybe around May where there are a lot of public holidays. For example, if Thursday is a public holiday, they'll add the Friday and then take a long weekend that kind of thing. I think it's quite standard, but yeah, that's how holidays work here in France. We are very blessed. There are many public holidays, or I must say I was blessed when I worked a nine to five. Now I don't get public holidays. I just work all the time. I can understand that this might be frustrating if you're trying to get something specific done and the people that you want to work with are not available. But I think it sort of allows you to realize that like life is not that serious. You don't need to take it that seriously. Things will get done when they get done and we'll all probably enjoy it more if we don't put so much stress and pressure on ourselves. 
His fourth point was about bikes versus cars in Paris and I totally agree it's insane to drive a car in Paris you can so easily get around on foot or by bike and I also think that if you do choose to ride a bike you should definitely wear a helmet because the traffic in Paris is kind of insane you're dealing with buses and motorbikes who are not really worried about you I personally would recommend only riding a bicycle in areas that you know that way you don't add a GPS into the mix and you already know if there are bike lanes where you want to go. I just wouldn't recommend getting your GPS out and trying to like navigate your way across Paris like the streets and the traffic. Even though there are a lot more bike lanes now as he said Paris is becoming more cyclist friendly however it's still kind of dangerous. I remember one time there was a period where I was taking the uber bicycles to the gym and I was not wearing a helmet it was very bad. That's actually why I stopped because I felt like it was dangerous to be riding like an electric bike without a helmet and there was a roundabout that I had to take and I didn't realize there was a pothole in the middle of the roundabout and it literally almost threw me over the handlebars it stopped my bike and threw me off the seat to the point where I was standing and so easily could have been an accident if a car had been driving behind me for example luckily it was in a quiet area and nobody was directly behind me but it was super scary and ever since then I just thought definitely wear a helmet definitely know the streets that you're driving on and stick to the bike lanes as much as possible. Okay next up is the metro. I definitely agree that the metro is the most efficient way to get across town. It's definitely convenient. It's definitely not the nicest environment depending on which line you are on. It can be smelly, it can be hot. Definitely avoid line 13 at all costs even if you have to walk for 30 minutes in the heat. Just do not step onto line 13 <laughs> if you can avoid it. You will thank me later. Ugh. But it is the fastest and the most convenient way to get across town if you're in a hurry and you don't want to ride a bike or it's raining or whatever. In terms of passes, I recommend getting the Navigo Easy. So it's a hard card, like a credit card type thing and it costs two euros and you can top it up as you go. It's basically a pay as you go system. So instead of buying the individual paper tickets, which often they become demagnetized in your wallet or next to your phone. So rather than having that issue and then having to go speak to the people at the ticket office, ask them for a new one, you can get a Navigo Easy, you can get individual tickets or what I normally do is I will buy a booklet of 10, which is actually cheaper. And then I will just use it as I go. There's no expiry date. And then when it runs out, I will put another booklet of 10 on. And because I work from home and I'm not taking the Metro every day, it makes more sense for me to buy a booklet and just use it as I go. In terms of accessibility in the metro, I 100% agree with him. There are many stairs. It's not very suitcase friendly. And also if you have reduced mobility, there are only a handful of stations in Paris that have elevators and are fully accessible. Carrying luggage is an absolute and it definitely highlights like the cultural difference between France and Australia or Paris and Melbourne maybe to be more specific because I would say eight times out of ten nobody is going to help you with your suitcase if they see you struggling in the metro whereas in Australia people are just more open and willing to help strangers. Point number six was smoking in Paris. I do have to agree here I'm also a non-smoker and there is a lot of smoking in the the city. I recently had to yell down to my neighbor who was smoking outside the window. She's in the apartment underneath mine. It was 1am. I had to ask her to find a solution because in the past hour and a half she had lit up three times and each time because it's summer and the windows are open in the evening to let the fresh air in. Well not so fresh because my apartment would end up smelling like cigarettes and I was trying to fall asleep and I just kept getting this like waft of like mm, cigarette smoke into my bedroom. So yeah, smoking is definitely something that's still prevalent in the city. Okay, I'm going to touch on this quote from Nathaniel when he said that French women have mastered that blasé, I don't give a fuck attitude because there is more to this than meets the eye. In my opinion, it has a lot more to do with how women are treated in this city and it is more of a defense mechanism than anything else. So I won't go into that today, but I can 
make a video about what it's like to live as a woman in Paris if that's something that you would be interested in hearing about. Number seven, lack of green spaces. So I have to say compared to other cities in France such as Bordeaux, there are actually quite a lot of green spaces in Paris. There are parks and gardens speckled all across the city even if some of them are quite small. If you consider somewhere like London I would say that we are a little behind in terms of greenery and green spaces but if you go into the very central London you'll find that it's quite similar to Paris. However if you think about it London is a much vaster city there's a huge amount of space to fit gardens and parks into that city. I used to live in West London in West Kensington and to get across town to Shoreditch I was going to take at least 45 minutes. You can pretty much get anywhere in Paris in about 30 minutes. If you're going really far it might take 40 but in London you would expect to take about 45 minutes to get anywhere. Of course as an Australian the more trees the better. I'm used to living in green environment, lots of trees, lots of nature. However it's a big city so I think they make a good effort to include greenery as much as they can but there are definitely certain areas in Paris which have a denser population and you will find that there are less trees. I feel found personally over the years I've gravitated more and more towards living in areas that have more trees, more nature, more parks. So I think it comes down to what suits you individually. Would you rather be living right in the center of Paris, the convenience, the nightlife and the noise, being in the thick of it? Or would you rather live a little bit further towards the edges or in a different part of town which is calmer, quieter, has more parks and gardens? gardens. It comes down to personal preference. There's definitely a way to compromise so that you get the best of both worlds, so that you have access to the forest or the parks and also are not too far from the center. Point number eight, Parisians are unicorns who are inaccessible. I think it's a little hard for Nathaniel to judge given that he arrived just before the pandemic. I mean 2020-2021 weren't really real life in Paris. It definitely was more difficult to have any social contact during that time so obviously more difficult to make friends as well. Nobody was out and about and also working independently personally I found really stifles your ability to make friends. In my 10 years in Paris the period where I made friends the easiest was when I was working in an office and it was like a very cool office environment. I still am in contact with my old colleagues and some of them became very good friends who I traveled with and and spent a lot of time with. So I have to say when I went freelance I had to really find new ways to meet new people whether that be my clients or my neighbors or through walking my dogs and the key is really to have some common ground so maybe you go to the same gym, you work in the same office, you live in the same building, you walk in the same park. I don't think that this is necessarily a French phenomenon phenomenon. Even though French people or Parisians tend to have this reputation for being cold and unfriendly, it's not entirely true and I think we need to consider what it's like in other cities before we start to judge Parisians. Personally I had a harder time making friends with my British colleagues in London than I did with my Parisian or French colleagues in Paris. I found that other expats in London were way more open to making friends which is obviously quite normal but that the Brit over there they had their group of friends from their childhood and they didn't need to make new friends in their office and I think that's quite normal because if I think about my childhood friends in Australia they don't hang out with a bunch of expats on the weekends they're hanging out with either childhood friends or colleagues that they've made at work or friends that they've met through their network because obviously when you grow up somewhere you have a much larger network of friends and so you meet people through people through people and it just grows like that. So I think what he said is right. Parisians do have their core group of friends from their childhood and that doesn't mean that you can't make friends with them. It's just that it's probably easier to make friends with expats. I also have had some of my closest friends in Paris be expats and also some Parisians. So it's really, it's been a mix. It's also quite easy to connect with expats here because you're living the same experience. You can sort of compare notes and you have more common ground and shared experiences which makes it 
bit easier to build a connection. Okay, last point is bad service in restaurants. I think it really depends what kind of restaurant you go to. I would definitely steer clear of brasseries in very touristic restaurants. So a brasserie is like a very typical French restaurant. They usually serve French cuisine and they have those chairs and small little round tables on the terrace. And it's true that in my experience, some of the waitresses and waiters have had some attitude in these kinds of places. I felt that the nicer the restaurant, the better the service in general. And also that most restaurants based in the Marais are quite relaxed. It is true that sometimes they will forget you when it comes to paying the bill. I think it kind of speaks to the culture here. Yes, Parisians are generally in a rush and moving quickly across the city, but the French or European mentality is still present here. It's about enjoying your weekends, enjoying your time off. And I also should mention that you need to assert yourself here more than you might in a different country, in like an English speaking country, for example, whether it's to cross the street or hail down a waiter to get the bill. Being mild mannered doesn't get you very far here. Overall, I agree that there are some pros and cons. Some things Paris does really well, as he said, and like all big cities, there are some drawbacks. But Nathaniel clearly loves this city, otherwise he wouldn't have bought an apartment here. And honestly, these small issues do not take away from the experience as a whole. Paris, especially in your 20s and 30s, is a magical city. As I mentioned in my Emily in Paris reaction video, which is linked below if you are interested in watching that, if you choose to live in Paris, you should appreciate it for what it is. And not compare it to your hometown or try to point out its imperfections. The perfect city does not exist. Only the city that feels perfect for you. That wraps up today's video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope I offered some useful tips on how to deal with these potential issues so you feel more prepared when you come to Paris. In my next video, I'll be sharing 10 things I learned in my 10 years living abroad. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love you to hit the like button and you're always welcome to join this little internet community by subscribing. And so I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.